Okay, here's another question from the conservation of mass and conservation of momentum concepts. So I have a nozzle here, which is occupied by a water. The question is asking me, what is the anchoring force needed to hold this nozzle in place? Okay, and what it also says, the question says that this um, purple colored region is water. So it goes all the way to here and it goes all the way down to here as well. Okay, and the rest of the system which is this green section is mercury, all right? So that is the height of the mercury column. And the specific weight of mercury is given, specific weight of water is given as well. And in here I gave myself V1 and D1, so the properties for section one is known. Section two, I gave myself D2, but I don't know the V2, okay? But also if I read it carefully, it says fluid is jet at section two. So what it means is this is just open atmosphere over here, okay? So it's open to atmosphere. All right, let's get going. I have a few steps that I want to make sure that we are following. The first step is to read the question, which is kind of dummy step so far, right? The second step is to draw the control volume. In order to save time, I already went ahead with it. That is the orange colored dotted lines, basically this one. I align myself with this. I align myself over here, right? And I'm tangent to the surface of the nozzle. Okay, step number three is to establish the assumptions or special cases. Let's go down and write assumptions section. Is this steady? Oh yeah, it is steady. I don't see any time variance. Is this constant density? Yes, this is given to me as the water, so it will be constant density. And will this be also uniform flow? Yes, I wasn't given, given information about the velocity distribution in the inlet or the exit. With these three assumptions, I should be able to proceed with my analysis. I will come back to this assumptions section and revisit it if needed. Okay. Um, all right. So the next step is to assess which basic principles am I going to use. The first basic principle is the conservation of mass. So do I need the conservation of mass for this particular question? The approach that I take is I look at my velocity and area. If I have something missing in the velocity and area, I need to use the conservation of mass. If this information is supplied to me, no need to do the conservation of mass. You're going to get 5 is equal to 5. But in my case, I know my, I don't know my V2, so I will go ahead with that. Okay, let's do that. So let's write here, conservation of mass. But this time around, it's fairly easy. V1A1 is equal to V2A2 with those three assumptions. And my V1 is given as 2 meter per second, right? A1 is given as pi over 4. The diameter is 4 centimeters, so it's going to be 4 times 10 to the minus 2 square, right? Will be equal to the exit velocity, which I don't know. And area is pi over 4. This time around, the exit diameter is 1 centimeter, okay? So if I look over here, the pi over 4 cancel, 10 to the minus 2 squares cancel. And you see over here, I get myself V2 as 2 times 4 squared is 16, so that is 32 meter per second okay so i know now my second velocity over here the velocity does increase does this make sense oh yeah it does the area gets smaller so the velocity has to get larger okay the next step is to do the conservation of momentum to find my force okay um, but in order to do that what you will do is on the left hand side of the equation the first type of forces i would like you to analyze is the pressure forces right so I don't have a pressure here it's given to me as jet so I'm good there but how about here yeah I need that I need this because I will anyways if I start the conservation of momentum I'm gonna come back to here and find it so why don't I go strategic and find it right here right now okay so this is the central point for that and this is the central point for that my question is this I'm not gonna go this line by line because I have module two and in the module two I have a bunch of different examples and approaches as well so I would like you to revisit it if necessary but look at this um, actual dashed line the red dashed line if I go down on over here I increase the pressure right it is zero so it's going to be zero plus rho g which is the specific weight of water which is 9800 times this height but I'm not given that okay is this a deal breaker no because think about it I'm going to go like that I'm going to go up this and then see see here bam it's the same height so i i will increase my pressure by rho gh i'm going to decrease my pressure by rho gh so those, those will cancel there so it's irrelevant 
So if you think about it then, um, these pressure differences between this point and this point is equal to the pressure difference between this point and this point. I'm not saying that the pressure is equal to is here. Those are different values. But I'm saying that this minus that is equal to this minus that. Okay. I said I'm not going to do it in detail, but I apparently I'm doing it, right? Um, okay, let's proceed. When I go down over here, I'm going to increase my pressure by rho g of the mercury, or specific weight of the mercury times 0.5 meters. One thing I would like to know, this is very typical in nozzles, um, the pressure difference is fairly large, right? So I didn't draw this to scale. <laughs> um, this is one centimeter, this is, you know, half a meter, right? FYI, because if I draw it to the scale, it's going to be awkward looking, right? Okay, so anyways, going down, I'm going to increase the pressure by specific weight of the mercury times 0 0.5, and then the pressure here it will be pressure there. And when I go up in this uh, purple colored, it's going to be 9,800 times this height, which is 0 0.5 as well. So let me just write what I said, okay? P1 minus P2, and the P2 is 0 in this particular case, is going to be um, specific weight of the mercury, because I'm going down, times 0 0.5 meter is how much I'm going down, minus specific weight of the water, times 0 0.5, as well, because it's the same height that I go up. So from here, you can see I get myself P1 is equal to 0 0.5 times specific weight of the mercury is 133,000, that's given to me, minus 9,800, right? So let's look at this number. Um, it's going to be 10,000 plus 200, right? So it's going to be 123,200 will be the value. And if I divide this by 2, 1,200 divided by 2 is 600, 122,000 is 61,600 pascals is what I get as my P1 value. So now I should be fairly ready to attack the conservation of momentum equation now. So the question is, here, let's take a look here. Um, I didn't even specify the, the direction. That was on purpose because it is irrelevant so far, okay? But right now I'm going to do a very traditional horizontal is x, vertical is y, kind of the coordinate axis. And the question is asking me in the x direction. So I'm going to redraw the pre better diagram of my controlled volume. So the first force will be the one that I am interested in. And I'm going to call this fx. That's what the question is asking me, anchoring force to hold this in place, okay? Note there's something in here. I kind of know that this is going to be negative, right? Did you realize that? So think about it. It's, it's like hitting over here. So, you know, so I need to put it, push it this way to hold it. But careful with your analysis. It depends on the pressure difference as well. Don't always go with your intuition. It's a little bit of a complicated case. But most likely I will get that direction. But it doesn't matter. Mathematics will tell me. So I always align my um, unknown force direction with whatever the direction of the axis is, okay? I'm going to have the first type of forces will be P1A1. If I had P2A2, it will be this direction, but P2 is 0, so I'm not going to put that in. Second type, second type of forces are the viscous forces, but I'm not given this distance, the surface area, etc., so I will not be able to calculate it. So I'm going to go up in here and I'm going to say that this is in the visit. Bam. So this is good. Third type of force is the body force. Let's put it over here. I don't have enough information, but it doesn't matter as I write the conservation of momentum in the x direction. All right. Let's proceed with red. I like that color now. So summation of the forces in the x will be equal to the axis is rho. Rho is constant, so I'm not going to differentiate. Bx2, Bn2. A2 minus rho Vx1, Vn1, A1. Exit minus inlet. How about um, summation of the forces? Well, it's right over here. It is f of x is aligned with the post x. P1, A1 is aligned with the post of x. So I'm going to simply write that. Fx, which I'm after, plus P1, A1 will be equal to rho is, I didn't give you that, I should, 999 kilogram per meter cube. Vx2, let's write it over here. This is the V2, this is the V1, V2, V1. You can see V2 is aligned with the extraction, so it's going to be the value itself, which is 32, right? That's what we find from the conservation of mass. 
the way that I pick my uh, control volume, I always align my control volume with the exit area. So I'm going to always have the velocity is equal to itself over here. A2 is pi over 4. What was the second one? 1 centimeter. So 10 to the minus 4, right? 10 to the minus 2 square. Okay. How about let's go down here. I don't think I would be able to fit. 999. Vx1 was 2, right? Same logic. Vn1 is 2 as well. And this time around, I'm going to have pi over 4. It's going to be 4 times 10 to the minus 2 squared. So that's going to be 16 times 10 to the minus 4. And in here, let's be careful. This is 61,600. This is Pascal's. And A1 is the same as over here. So it's going to be pi over 4, um, 16 times 10 to the minus 4. Now I need to punch this into calculator. There is no way I can calculate this from the head, top of my head because even the pi's don't cancel. All right, so I'll be right back after I calculate it. Okay, I went ahead and calculated this is for you minus two point one. What is the unit? Newtons. Okay, so as expected, we get ourselves a negative, which means that I was not as lucky in, in picking the direction of the force. It's actually this direction, which. Kind of makes sense, but again, take it easy with your guesses uh, with, and your intuition. Sometimes it kind of fools you, all right? So this was a fairly uh, manageable question, but what I wanted to illustrate is how to integrate basically module 2, module 5, module 6 into one question, okay? And in the future, I will do module 7. I can ask you something called what is the loss? And that way I can incorporate module 2, module 5, module 6, module 7 into one question. And that's typically a good final exam question for me, okay?